Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. There has been noticeable talks about Sanguine Alchemy and how amazing it has become overnight, and I just want to hear from you guys, what are your opinions on the exotic? Me personally, I think it's more amazing now depending on the weapons used, which is why today I'm going to show you an OP build using high arc needs. Just because the amount of damage these two do is extraordinary to witness. And don't worry, this build is not limited to just hierarchy of needs. It's starting with the general aim and exotic of the build. Our aim is to showcase Sanguine Alchemy's effect and encourage users to try and test out different weapons with the build. For this, we will be using Sanguine Alchemy and the hierarchy of needs. Let's start with our exotic armor, Sanguine Alchemy, with its exotic effect, Blood Magic. It states, while standing in any rift, Damaging a target will mark it. You deal extra damage to marked targets and gain additional bonus damage with weapons that have a damage type matching your equipped super. Weapon final blows while standing in any rift pauses the rift cooldown, extending its duration. The exotic has gone through a number of changes before reaching its current stage and I don't believe this will be the end of it once more. Being able to freeze your rift duration, apply times 4 surge, and also get increased damage from marked targets that do stack is one of the best exotics to use when doing general damage phases. My combo is using Hierarchy of Needs, which will increase its damage further upon triggering its exotic effect. And since it can take out enemies quite easily, I can keep its buff going for as long as I like. Now imagine if we swap that out for Polaris Lance instead, for even longer DPS, or even Whisper of the Worm. Sanguine on a whole is carrying a lot of weight for how easy it is to use for the general player. Our second exotic is High Arc of Need with its exotic effect, Guidance Ring, which states, Precision hits and final blows build Guidance Ring energy. Opposing Guardians grant additional energy. At full charge, hit firing creates a Guidance Ring. A High Arc of Needs paired with Sanguine is the perfect combo all players should try. Activating Guidance Rings are fairly easy at the ranges you'll be playing at, and upon activation, they do a significant amount of damage with or without buffs at play. As previously stated, your weapon can be pretty much anything that works well with Sanguine's design, so I recommend you try out the heavy precision weapons against bosses like Shown, as damage numbers show to be quite oppressive over time. Now for the aspects and fragments, we have the following. A touch of flame, where using your healing, solar, firebolt, and fusion grenades grants enhanced benefits. Helion, where using your class ability it will summon a solar mortar that will scorch and ignite targets. Ember of Aperium, where solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects. Ember of Solace, where radiant and restoration effects applied to you have increased duration. Ember of Sindering, where your class ability recharges faster when enemies are scorched. And Ember of Combustion, where a final blows with a solar super causes targets to ignite and create fire sprites. Our Sanguine kit is best suited when combined with solar subclass simply because the weapons and subclass super all will lean into the strength of the exotic. A prime example of this is using Well of Radiance and Ember of Combustion together which will not only increase our base weapon damage by X amount but it will also allow my solar weapons to proc ignitions after kills. Considering the buffs we have already, this is only going to make the exotic even stronger. After this, I chose Healing Grenades since we don't need to worry about additional damage with the current kit. Using Ember of Aperium and Solus together is enough to increase our survival odds when using it in higher endgame content. Lastly, Sindering is here to support Helion upon using my class ability. It's one of the better aspects to use and can work with either Powering or Healing Rifts depending on what you generally fancy. As the gameplay will show, our healing grenades are the main MVPs when supporting the build overall. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. We also have recovery marked as priority, but not by a lot. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. I have added the Harmonarch Resistance mod to reduce income and solar damage by 15%. Now, while this might not be useful all the time, it will still seek its focus with improving my survivability. You can potentially add because of dampen instead, but only if you can make the space to do so and if you're happy to make certain sacrifices. Now for discipline we have ours at tier 10 for a 46 second cooldown via healing grenades. The damage isn't going to be a huge deal with the common build we are using, so switching out our damaging grenades to a healing one will provide greater benefits over time. 
Healing grenades will increase our survivability odds by a noticeable amount, while having Ember of Imperium and Solace will be key to further bolster its effects. It's also going to be handy if you want to use Empowering Rifts instead of Healing Rifts, as this way you can get even more damage out of your shots while in safety, but this is more of a personal preference. Now, in terms of ability cooldowns, we have the following. Impact Induction x 2 for a 17% grenade buff, Focusing Strike for a 12% class ability buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be all that you currently need. And now for the additional mods, we have the following. A Solar Siphon for creating all the power via matching elemental type, a special and heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon, a stasis holder for reloading stasis weapons when stowed, a solar surge mod for a 10% solar weapon buff, although this is optional, a powerful attraction where activating your class ability will automatically collect all the power in your venicity, and time dilation which will reduce the decay time when charged with light. Now onto the weapons, we have covered our main exotic primary weapon. I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all options, so please keep this in mind. Our primary is the Lost Signal Grenade Launcher with Lead from Golden Vorpal Weapon, a very popular weapon and perk roll that is incredible to use in endgame and for this season alone. With its ability to apply dot damage over time and also combining this with Concussive Reload mod, this weapon is truly perfect of being simple and easy to use on the dot. My perks focus on ammo economy and increased damage against ultra enemies, which I recommend you do as well. For heavy, we have the Dimensional Hypercroid with Field Prep and Vorpal Weapon. Following in the same steps as Lost Signal, this weapon is being used solely for the harder enemies in game. Now, not much is really needed to cover as most of the players are generally using it in high numbers, but if you feel you need perks that make more noticeable impact on the field, then try and get a Typhon GL5 with Chill Clip attached, as this can be useful for the extra damage and working closely with the seasonal mods applied. The Sanguine Alchemy has come a long way from being useful in only PvP to being a top tier item to use in the endgame and above now. Again, the ability to freeze rifts from kills made, getting a times 4 surge stack upon class ability activation, and applying additional damage to mini bosses to bosses over time is something you don't see from just one exotic in general. And yet, here we are witnessing a legend. The great thing about the exotic is how it can pretty much work with any exotic weapon you have in mind, as long as the element being used is matching. Me using Hierarchy of Needs is a prime example of this, as a Hierarchy's exotic effect encourages players to stand still and make full use of the guidance rings for that extra bonus of damage. This, as shown, provides quite a noticeable impact against a wide number of enemies, as, no joke, it continues to get stronger by the longer it is out. Of course, this is not where the build excels the most in though. The chosen exotic can be swapped out for other long range weapons that recommend staying in one space all the time, such as Tiku's Divination, Whisper of the Worm, and Leviathan's Breath, just to name a few. And the damage being done is noticeable, must I say. Applying extra debuffs on top of the weapon buffs will make short work of bosses, which in many ways will allow users to farm or speedrun bosses much more efficiently. So overall, you're not locked down to just a single weapon or subclass, you can use other options as well, and the results are, well, near the same. The video shown should persuade you as to why this exotic of weapon of choice is highly looked upon with its recent buffs. It's now flexible enough that using this in a team of 3 or 6 or even on your own is beneficial enough to make a large impact from just your damage alone. You may want to try this out in the Vesper host as a test run as well. I hear it's doing some good things there. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pin section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.